because that you stated that I wasn't taking a stand, the lawyer has no standing, and this judge lacks personam jurisdiction, and I'm not uh, taking the stand. Is that the reason why that the judge called in the correction officers? Yes. And what rights do you think that they had uh, to be in that courtroom? I believe they had no right. They to have be. no right because outside of those guard fences, they have absolutely no authority to do anything. You realize that? That's yes, I do now. Okay, now, but for this judge to make a bold statement like that, now, uh, do you understand how and why that this judge that has to be exposed? Oh yes, I would not want to see anyone ever come before her again. Now, you know what I did? I called them on the phone and I spoke with the secretary for the judge and who would not even discuss anything with with me so which is rightfully so okay but what I did then I called up the warden the warden that has his jail whatever you want to call it right next door it's a matter of a fact don't they touch yes okay and what I asked the warden on the phone what gives you the right, because the judge calls you on the phone and asks you to send in some, uh, some guards uh, now to force this guy to take the stand? And what he said is that, Jim, this is the greatest thing going, that he says, uh, what would you do if somebody was in distress? That wouldn't you go and help them? I says, yes, I would. But I know Kevin. And I don't think that he is that nature uh, that he's going to pose anybody a problem. The judge said uh, that we needed help that because you were getting out of line. Kevin, though at any time, did you pose a direct threat to uh, this judge? Well, I sort of think I did by telling her the rules of the court. And that was a threat to her that she... No, I'm not saying that that I'm saying bodily harm. Oh, no, absolutely not. No way. No, no way. No, no way. So after going around with this, this man, right, I forget his name, I have it written down. Uh, now, you know what he said to me, Jim? What did he say? <laughs> he says, Mr. Paletta, what difference does it make what we did? After all, no one was hurt by my guards, were they? Well, yeah. The stress and the duress and the anguish that they caused, Kevin? Yeah, but you know what I said to him? Did you ever hear of the Constitution of the United uh. States? And I strongly suggest that you go back and read it. Just by your statement tells me that you have no idea what you have just done. So just for that, that I think that you should resign, and I am saying to you that you should expect a lawsuit for what you've done to this man. Now, don't forget that Jody now, we interviewed her at her home, and you're one of her closest friends. And if this statement is not true, I want you to say to me, Mickey, that's not true. Was Jody emotionally upset here for probably two or three days. Very upset. Was she crying and was she she upset and was she uh, concerned? Very concerned. And you know the reasons why she was concerned and people pay attention to this? Uh, because she has her own case. And who do you think it's before? That same judge. The same judge, Christine R. Heck. Now, uh, do you think that a judge that would participate in this type of doings, do you think that, uh, that Jody deserves to have a judge like her hear her case? Absolutely not. So uh, do you blame me or Jim or CRC for looking into a, a lawyer to support you so that this doesn't happen to anybody else ever again by that judge? No, I think that's the right thing to do and the proper thing to do. Okay. Now, I mean, hasn't that caused you and with your own uh, home life the little bit of distress? Oh, very much so. Okay. And uh, believe me, it has cost my home life a huge amount of stress, not just for months, 
but for probably many, many years, 18, 19 years at least. I know well, what you're going through, and the only thing I can say is that when this is all said and done, uh, that you're going to know that you did the right thing, okay? Because if we don't rise up and uh, stop these people, you know what it's going to be like for your kids and uh, for your kids at home and Jim? Ten times as bad as it is now. Right. How would you like to live without food or very, very little food? For okay. $5,000 worth of health care a year. And uh, how would you like to live uh, with no gas in your cars? <clears throat> how would you like to go to bed at night without heat on or without air in your house? So people, I can go on and on and on, but let me just end this section here by saying that if we value our way of life, that we cannot sit by and allow these people to do it to us, us Jim. And what we got to do is I am hoping that somehow that we can find four million people, more people like you, Kevin, that is aware of the risk and that you're willing to make a stand. So what I say to you all, uh, if you value what's really going on, that you're going to have to study this man here and let's make this happen. I need four million more Americans to take the same stand and we win, that we will win uh, because the Federal Reserve has to go down if we value our way of life. Okay, Jim? Jody and Dan Noltz are witnesses to the court proceedings that Kevin was in and they have signed affidavits to the facts of what went on in the courtroom and there's going to be conspiracy and RICO suits filed against the judge and that is Judge Christine Heck Judge Christine Heck we expect some lawsuits and there's also a complaint that's going into the Judicial Conduct Board against this judge <laughs>